Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about generics in Java. So before we go about generics, let's understand why do we need generics and what, what was the requirement that led to the creation of generics. So as we know that when we work in an, any object oriented programming language, we created classes, we create objects, we create variables and everything has a type. Everything has a type and that type is static. The type cannot be changed. That's why we call Java as a, as a strong type checking language at compile time. It checks the types of the variables of the classes at the compile time. And if the classes are mismatching or their types are mismatching, then you basically get a compilation error. But what we see as we, as we moved along, we saw that we were creating the similar kind of functionality again and again in different classes. For example, if there is a login functionality, which should allow a person to log in and we should also allow an application to log in, then these are the two different use cases, but the functionality still remains the same. So how would the login functionality allow both of the types of entities, be it user or application to get into the application or, or login into the consumer application? How do you do that? And that's what led to the creation of generics that you can reuse the same code with different types of inputs. Remember the stress here is on the types and that's what it is mentioned here that we will like to reuse the same code with different inputs. We will just keep changing the type parameters and we'll keep using the same same code again and again. It has some uh, benefits over the non generic code like we mentioned like I mentioned earlier that when we work with the non generic code, we have the statically assigned types to the variables and objects. And if we use generics, then we don't have to do that. And at the same time, you don't even have to explicitly cast them. We already touched upon this concept of uh, generics in different bits and pieces in different sessions throughout this tutorial series, where we saw that whenever I was creating a list, I was supplying this type into these brackets, right? And I told that this, that this is the generic type. But now we'll go deeper into this concept and we'll see how we can create our own generic types if Java does not provide it. So with that, let's move to an example and see how we can implement our own generic types to create generic code where we can supply the types dynamically. So I've prepared an example for this. I've actually prepared two examples for this and we'll go through both of them one by one. So here what I'm doing that I'm creating any class. You can think of it as any class holding any functionality which is applicable to multiple entity types. Think of it as the same login class which I just talked about. So if you're class has a functionality which should be reused by many different types, then one of the way to not repeat the code or repeat the class or repeat the functionality again and again is to make that class use a generic signature. And how you do that, you write the class name and then you put these brackets and you just type T. You can write any variable ABC or whatever you feel like, but T is sort of the our default standard the Java developers have been using since generics was launched. So you put this T here. Now, whoever calls this class or whoever initializes this class will have to supply the type of the class on which this particular functionality is going to get executed. Now, remember the collection examples I took, uh, I took uh, in the past series. What if this was a list class? Because we have used the exact same syntax, right? We use list, we put brackets, and then we wrote string and we said, okay, now this list is a uh, list of strings. If we said list of integer, then we just write integer in these brackets and that list became an, a, a list of integers. So you see the same list was being reused for different data types. And the exact same concept is applied here for your custom classes and your, and your own custom functionality. So I write T here, then I can do whatever with this T I want. So I just uh, put a reference of it inside the class. I create a constructor. Constructor is also assigning the T type. I do a get object and that's all. It's a very simple toy example, but just to get the point across, you can write as complex logic as you want inside the class, depending upon your use case. But this is just a straightforward example that you can use generics in the classes as well. Once you do that, then how do you initialize this class? So let's have a look at that as well. So I've just created a public static void bin method inside the same class. Obviously you can create this method outside the uh, outside this class as well. There's no stopping that logic, but, uh, but for the sake of simplicity, I've just put the main class here. So it's a simple public static void bin method. There I am initializing the single generic holder class, the same class. 
and here the t type is of integer this t type can be of anything else as well for example your own student class can also be supplied here and then this single generic holder will become of student type in this case i'm just using a pre-built java class so this single generic holder becomes of integer type i give a reference i create an object and i provide a value to the object because you see the constructor is this whatever t you supply so if the t is the integer this t becomes integer and this obj is going to hold the value 10 because that's the constructor being called here and after that you can do whatever you want in terms of the logic here i'm just i just have i just have a get object method so i'm just calling that method and printing the object that's all similarly you can also initialize the same class with the string type so you see i'm reusing the same class and the same functionality again and again for different class types so this time i'm using the string type in instead of integer and i'm supplying a string parameter this time and this this constructor still will work because this is generic when you created with integer this constructor this t became of integer type and when you initialized it with, with the string type this constructor started accepting the string objects so I just supply a string called simply code and then i call get object so let's run this method so when we run the main method from the first invocation at line 16 and 17 when you call the get object the value of the object gets printed which is 10 for the integer and then at line 20 the value of the string gets printed which is simply code so that's how you can use generics inside a class or for a class now there might be use cases where you have to create a class which can accept multiple types of generic types let's take an example if you remember when we talked about hash map we had the exact same situation so you had the key and you had the value now key can be of any type any data type it can be string integer whatever and then value can also be of any data type it can also be your custom data types for example uh, the key becomes a roll numbers uh, and uh, the value becomes student object so map is a situation where you have two generic types so i'm just trying to replicate that similar kind of behavior that if you have to create a class with two three as many generic types as you want you can still do that by just providing a comma here you can go on doing as many generics as you want in this example i'm using two generics and then it again goes to the same drill that i've created references for both t and u i have initialized both t and u in the constructor and then i have a display method which is going to call the and display the obj1 and obj2's values or they are two string methods basically because when you when you try to call the object inside the system.out.println method the by default the two string method of the object will automatically get called so that's all i have in this particular class so I, it's a simple class accepting two different types of generics and then calling the display method and here is the public static void main method for the same here i am initializing the dual generic class and here the t is string and u is integer so these t and u are assigned these class types and then i create the class i again write the same types and i provide the value so for the string one i provide simply code for the integer one i provide 10 this constructor gets called obj1 gets the value simply code and obj2 gets the value 10 and then i call display method there i am printing obj1 and obj2 so let's run this method okay i'm getting simply code in 10 because when i call the display method at line 13 obj1 gets printed obj1 is holding simply code value and at line 14 obj2 gets printed or the two string method of the obj2 gets printed which is holding the value 10. so this was a quick tour uh, to tell you how can you use generics you can obviously use generics in the variable types as well you can use generics in the method argument types as well wherever you want the simple idea is that one you would like to reuse the functionality again and again and second you would like to you would not like to have a strong strict type checking and like I said, try to relate these generic concepts with the collection framework we listen because collection framework is completely built upon the concept of generics. Whenever we initialize a list or a map or a hash set or a linked list or array list or anything, we always supply the type. And the type is coming from these, uh, if you look at the implementation of array list class, you will see that. Let me see if I can open that for you to show you how that looks like. 
if I go to an example uh, of collections and if I try to just open the class, you will be able to see that. Yep. So if I click on this list class, you see list of E type. So here E is the type which you are going to supply. So in this particular case, when you say list of integer, this integer gets typed into E. So whatever, so this, this whole list class, whatever operations you're doing inside the list class will be applied for the integer type. So similarly, you can look at other collection classes and you will always see these generics everywhere in the collection classes. And that's all I want to cover for this particular session. And in the next session, we are going to look at different examples of string handling. So string handling has a lot of utility functions and APIs which can come very handy and we will have a deep dive onto that particular topic in the next session. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.